just this week was named a third team All-American. Yeah, and rightfully so with the way that she has pitched this year, a transfer from Alabama, and the pitching staff for Oklahoma State has been so strong. Her drop ball is what is strong for Lexi Kilfoyle. She loves to fill up the bottom of the zone. You'll see her go in that green area. That is her hot zone of where she likes to go most with her drop ball on both sides of the plate and her changeup. She won't go up in the zone very much with her rise ball or anything else of the sorts because she loves to stay down in the zone with her drop ball and roll ground ball outs. When you look at the, where she gets the majority of her swings and misses. It's on this heat map in the red area. You see down at the bottom of the zone on both sides of the plate. She can go there equally. A lot of confidence both on her glove side and her arm side with her drop ball and change. Kenny Gajewski turned to Lexi Kilfoyle to open the Super Regionals against Oregon, and she threw a gem, allowing one run in a complete game. He turns to her with Oklahoma State's backs to the wall. Cowgirls needing to win tonight. Sunday and then two on Monday to make it to the champ series tonight step one as Allie Bellardi the junior steps in for the Utah Utes the second elimination game of the 2023 World Series is underway with ball one a little low and our first pitch tonight 850 central time it is quite a pleasant evening temperature wise that's because there is quite an unpleasant amount of wind 77 degrees at first pitch. Velarde the batting average leader for the Utes the on base percentage second best player at 453 behind Bonstrom. A great base dealer as well with a little bit of power and she takes a call strike one. This Utah team 42 and 15. There is the Utes traveling party. They have been loud all day. Coming out of Salt Lake City. Velarde 0 for 3, a walk in the opener today, and that one slapped out of play. This Utah team, one of three Pac 12. Selections are one of three Pac-12 entrants to the World Series. They won the Pac-12 tournament, as we said. It's been a great story of redemption for Utah on a night where, as we said, there is a great deal of win. Uh-oh, we may have something to open. I can see it's blowing in a couple of seconds ago. Is blowing even harder. Those flags whipping, blowing in. It's a good day to be a pitcher. I'll keep the ball in the ballpark. It's like Lexi Kilfoyle's drop ball and changeup will. If someone had opened the third base gate there when you heard, uh oh, we may have something on one of the umpire <laughs> mics. Just somebody trying to get that ball maybe out of the gate. Kilfoyle's 1 2. Lost control of it. Lexi Kilfoyle, you mentioned a drop ball specialist, Amanda, and she told us that she is as healthy as she's been in a long time. Three years in Alabama. Had hip surgery one year ago tomorrow, June 3rd, 2022. About a full year to feel 100%, and she feels 100% right now. Well. Yeah, which she just kind of glowed when she talked about it, just feeling healthy and her body being healed. You talked about that surgery that she had. She had a torn hip labrum. Didn't start throwing until the beginning of September last fall and kind of eased into it. Did really well in the Super Regional. We saw her pitch a gem against Oregon. On a 3-2, Bellardi slaps one to the shortstop, Kylie Naomi, who throws her out to open the game. There's Kenny Gajewski who's taken Oklahoma State to the World Series for a fourth consecutive time. Never been done in program history. Made the tournament every year as an Oklahoma State coach. First three years took the Cowgirls to regionals. The last four to the World Series. And as Amanda mentioned, the only other team to do that, their in-state rival Oklahoma. One away, Alyssa Bonstrom batting. 
I always go into a game thinking about, Kevin, which team might have more pressure on them. And you would think in an elimination game that both teams have equal amounts of pressure, but I can't help but look at this game and think that Oklahoma State has a lot more pressure on them to stay alive than Utah. Oklahoma State being here four years in a row and Utah having made it, having made it for almost 30 years. Fair to say expectations coming into the year for Utah get back to the tournament yeah. for Oklahoma State probably get to the champ series get to the champ series and probably win it and that was their expectations last year they thought that they would be in the finals and they fell short lost those two games to Texas on semifinal Monday a tough stretch to the regular seasons few last weeks great postseason for them though as Kilfoyle does not get the call on that change up Danny Bowman tonight's plate umpire deems it a little low yeah and and it's not that was a great pitch right at the knees doesn't get much better than that and again you go back to that one one count that's so important to win it's either a one two count when she if she gets a call or it's a two one hitters count and a hitter like Bontram loves it thrives in those hitters counts Lisa Bostrom, who may be playing her final collegiate game. The first team all Pac-12 player for the last two years. She's somebody who stuck it out. And it's not to say that the transfer portal, entering the portal, means you're quitting or giving up. Not at all. Look at Lexi Kilfoyle has found a great opportunity. But Alyssa Bostrom is one of those players who had belief in her teammates, belief in her coach Amy Hogue. Five years, no NCAA tournaments until this season, and she will end her career in OKC. Bonstrom takes one, again deemed to be low. Worth noting early, a drop ball pitcher not getting the bottom of the zone, and a walk for Bonstrom. And Sandez on the other side, get the start for Utah, is a down ball pitcher as well. And, you know, when you start to see that, it, that's why it's not a surprise. It's like if we're talking about it, you know that the coaching staff is likely thinking it. And that's why John Barkfeld is coming out to talk to Lexi Kilfoyle and her catcher, Taylor Tuck. Only the second walk of the NCAA tournament for Kilfoyle in 17 innings. John Barkfeld, a fabulous pitching coach who was at Tulsa for a long time. His third year here, he has really filled out the staff. And Kenny Gajewski has said in the past, look, I'm the person on the staff that knows the least about softball. He feels like he knows <laughs> how to motivate, how to teach. But John Barkfell, Whitney Clower, his hitting coach, very detail-oriented assistants. Guarantee right now he's saying, we got to have those as strike calls. I feel like I read his lips, but if I didn't read it exactly, I kind of know what he's saying. And Maybe a little talk to Taylor Tuck as well about how she can help support that drop ball a little bit more up in the strike zone too. So here's Julia Jimenez with one on and one out. The senior Jimenez takes one definitively low. Transfer from Michigan, an all Pac-12 pick for the second straight year. And Jimenez can pack a punch, 10 home runs, one of three double-digit home run hitters for the Utes. Ha! Got the low strike there. Jimenez playing a couple of weeks after she fouled the ball off her face in the Pac-12 final against UCLA. Didn't miss a beat. Had to leave that game, but was back next week. Jimenez drives one. Deep center field. Factor is at the wall, and she'll come back in. A beautiful night to be a fly ball pitcher as the wind knocked down what looked like a home run off the bat of Julia Jimenez. Yeah, it Cheyenne Factor got a good read off the bat 
of Jimenez just knew she had to drop, step, go all the way back to the wall, thinking that she was going to have a chance to rob a home run. Instead, she has to backtrack a little bit forward. That wind is just blowing so hard in. It's what kept that ball in the ballpark. Win being the 10th like, defender out there for <laughs> Oklahoma State. I think Julia knows how well she hit it. Lexi Kilfoyle is typically a ground ball pitcher. Oklahoma State gets a break there. Ball one to Sophia Hawkins. Are you throwing any differently if you're in the circle with that wind at your back? If I'm Lexi Kilfoyle, I'm throwing like I am Lexi Kilfoyle, just throwing that drop ball, spinning it down, and that's just a good swing by Jimenez and a good approach to try to get the bottom of the ball against a drop ball pitcher. Hawkins out to short. Naomi plays the awkward hop and makes the play. So a scoreless first. Becker, Factor, and Naomi. The three super seniors will bat Factor, Naomi, and win the highest scoring team in Oklahoma State history. Also holding school records for average and on base percentage and the most doubles in the history of the Cowgirls, who've taken major offensive steps forward as a program under Kenny Gajewski. Well, for the first time in the last 10 Utah games, Mariah Lopez does not get the start. She threw in the early game today, so Sydney Sandez, the senior, will take the ball, try to keep Utah's season alive. An elimination game, you know she's feeling the pressure. The senior, a more down ball pitcher, she's experienced because she is that senior who was pitched in that uniform on the big stage before, works low in the zone, and she'll mix her speed, good drop and curve combo, rolls a lot of ground balls to her infield, very similar to Lexi Kilfoyle. The Utes bathed in red. And the corner's pinched in for the All-American, Rachel Becker. Becker aggressive. One of the best offensive players in college softball this season, Rachel Becker, a transfer from Purdue. Her one and only year at Oklahoma State has been a record-setting one. It's tied the school record for doubles with 22. She's tied with Florida State's Kaylee Harding for the nation's lead in doubles. Also eighth in on-base percentage and sixth in total hits. And you look at what Rachel Becker has been able to do in the postseason, and what sticks out to me is the number of walks that she has in the NCAA tournament. Six walks and not a ton of games, but she's had a really good eye, really high on base percentage, has exactly what you want out of a leadoff hitter. Off speed for a strike for Sandez. A beautiful backhand flip change up, getting the, and maybe a good sign. Get the bottom of the zone there, right at the knees, right in the corner. Good looking pitch. Only her second game in this NCAA tournament. Sydney Sandez. But first, she would like to forget. Utah's first game of the tournament, Sandez pitched against Southern Illinois, gave up five runs in one inning. And Amy Hogue has not turned to her since, leaning on Mariah Lopez, her All-American. But Lopez not starting the game after throwing 123 pitches this afternoon. I will say that Southern Illinois team in the regional, they picked up their offense. A lot of high-scoring games in that regional. They put up a lot of runs on the board. It's not a difficult run scoring environment either, Salt Lake City. Utah was able to sweep that regional, beat Ole Miss twice. Lost game one in the Supers to San Diego State, won the next two pretty comfortably. Wow. That's a tight one. Goes in favor of Becker, and Mariah Lopez didn't think so. An unfamiliar position for her with her team in the field. Will we see her at some point tonight? Seventh pitch to Becker. And it will be the last. Her seventh walk of the NCAA tournament. Oklahoma State with a base runner.
about 46 walks, 80 hits in 62 games for Rachel Becker. Add in two times hit by a pitch. And she has reached safely 128 times in 62 games. That's more than twice per game. Now a bunt from Cheyenne Factor deadens it beautifully, and Becker will take second. This is really the Calgary way. Becker gets on first. Factor moves her over. Her 13th sacrifice of the year. Now just a senior, not wasting any time, putting that down, knowing what her job is to execute and move Becker into scoring position. Now batting shortstop number five, Kylie Naomi. So a runner at second for Kylie Naomi. Kylie Naomi is the only Oklahoma State hitter to have faced Sydney Sandez in her career. Sandez threw against Oklahoma State in 2019 and 2020. Naomi was 0 for 4 with a walk in those two games. You take any stock in matchups from 19 and 20, five plate appearances? <laughs> Not a lot. No. <laughs> there have been a lot of plate appearances since then for Kylie. This is her 266th college game. She started them all. No active player has played more Division I games than Kylie Naomi. She was fence hunting there. <laughs> she was. Hitters count 2 0, looking for something that is not a changeup, I could tell. Kylie Naomi, RBIs in five of six games in the NCAA tournament, a field high 11. And another changeup. Went right back there. Back to back changeups, and Kylie Naomi geared up for something that was 65, not 51. You'll notice, too, back behind the plate, Kendall Lundberg is the catcher for Utah. Does a really nice job with his pitching staff. Very good receiver, good leader for them. And slow, slow, fast, and Naomi works in full. Could tell that Sandez is trying to find control of that drop ball right now. It seems like her changeup is the pitch that she's going to whenever she needs a strike. See if she goes to it here, full count. Against the Big 12 leader in RBIs, Kylie Naomi will take ball four. The second walk of the first inning. You can see how Sydney Sandez attacks Kylie Naomi, who worked it to a hitter's count. We talked about that drop ball and how it's just struggling to be a strike for Sandez. You'll see that in the first two pitches. Drop ball missed there, drop ball missed here, held on to it, and then she goes to her changeup for two strikes in a row to get back into the count. Tries again to go that drop ball, just not working. Full count, goes to more of a screw, is off the plate. But you can tell she's struggling with her command, and that's why we're to see a timeout called by her pitching coach for OU All-American Paige Parker and also Amy Hope, the head coach out there too. Looks like Amy's trying to keep the infield loose. And Paige Parker to her left. Amy Hogue, who has led Utah back to the World Series for the first time since she was a Utah player. She said, uh, yeah, every first question or every first sentence I've heard this week has included <laughs> the phrase 29 years ago. That's how long it's been since Utah last made it. And that young woman right there, Paige Parker, along with DJ Gasso, son of Patty Gasso, Oklahoma coach, have brought energy to this program and they're very good teachers to help this Utah team get back to the World Series. Fun coaching staff, passionate coaching staff, competitive coaching staff. I'll have to watch this Utah team grow along the season this year. Don't think there's going to be a one-year fluke for them. <laughs> no. 
So a big chance for Morgan Wynn, the senior. She'll take a strike. Morgan Wynn up to the cleanup spot tonight. She spent some time there this season. Reached base in her last 10 games. She's had a nice NCAA tournament. Win drills it. Base hit left field. Hit so hard that Becker holds it third. Win. Little swim move to elude the tag of Bonstrom over at first. That is one of the hottest sizzlers we've seen in the tournament. Becker couldn't get home on a blistered ball. Morgan Wynn gets her barrel down to this drop ball. It's low and in, and she knows what she's expecting and what she's looking for. That ball was hit so hard. Kanegayaski tells Rachel Becker, stay right here. They try to go to one, but I love the passion from Kylie Naomi at second base. Looking at Wynn, Kylie Naomi is the leader of this Oklahoma State team. So Becker, Naomi, and Wynn aboard for Caitlin Carwile. Carwile has reached base in 21 consecutive games. It's a 400 on base percentage here in the NCAA tournament. Good block by Kendall Lundberg. Just getting right in front of that pitch, smothering it, knowing that there is a runner at third base that she can't let it past her. Caitlin Carlisle, an all Big 12 player for the second straight year. A great conference season. That ball hits foul. In an elimination game, these are the opportunities that you have to take advantage of. You don't know how many you're going to get. You can't count on that you're going to get another opportunity like this in the third, the fourth, the seventh. You have to capitalize on bases loaded, less than two outs right here, and try to score first. Twentieth pitch of the inning for Sandez. Two and two. A mighty chance for Carwell and Oklahoma State in the first. And Carwell grounds the ball through the right side for a base hit. One run home. Naomi will go in standing to make it two. She was 0 for 8 at the World Series a season ago. She delivers with a two run single in the first. Caitlin Carwell to put Oklahoma State on top. Oklahoma State just continuing to attack this drop ball down in the zone. Carwile goes down and gets it. It's hit hard because the infield is playing in. It's able to get past Bellardi at second base to not just score one, but score two. That was a must have hit for Oklahoma State and Caitlin Carwile. Remember a year ago, she was benched for the final semifinal game against Texas. Now with Oklahoma State facing elimination at the World Series for the first time since that Texas game. It is Carwile who's had a great tournament, but I'm sure is happy to get that elephant off her back. And you just saw a couple of Utes head out to the bullpen. Michaela Work off speed for an 0-2 count. Some of these walks come into play too in the first inning. Good at bat by Rachel Becker to start things off. She drew a walk. And usually Rachel Becker has those great at bats in the first inning. That's why Oklahoma State is outscoring their opponents in the first inning greatly. Strike three to work. Sandez has the off speed working for out number two. 
She has a lot of confidence in this pitch. You're going to start to see her throw this pitch more. Change up. Curves away and down from work. Nice pitch for her. She has such good command of that pitch, and she knows it. She's feeling it with her change up. First strike out of the game brings up Talon Edwards in the seventh spot for Oklahoma State. Edwards, a freshman who was one of the most highly sought after freshman recruits in the country, reclassified to join Oklahoma State a year early. He's had a great postseason, been fearless. Regional final against Nebraska had an RBI double, scored the tying run then in the seventh inning. Seven for 17 here in her first NCAA tournament. It's a long inning for. Cindy Sandez in this first inning, almost 30 pitches that she's thrown here in the bottom of the first. Edwards puts her 28th pitch on the ground, and Edwards is out. Julia Jimenez makes the play. Oklahoma State takes the lead to win to advance here at the Women's College World Series. A long night yesterday. Try to recover for today and for more on the Cowgirls. Here's Courtney Lyle. Yeah, guys, I was able to catch up with Kenny Gajewski before this game and just asked him, you know, what was his message to the team last night? He said, I was able to circle up everybody. I had all their eyes on me so I could tell they were locked in after an uncharacteristic game last night. And he said, you have the chance to rebound and regroup here. And you're so good at doing that. He was so confident in telling me this. He says, I have such belief in this team. He let them have some family time this morning because it was a very long day before they regrouped about three o'clock to go over film. They went and hit at a facility. But I mean, you saw him last week, Kevin and Amanda. That was just so different than the Oklahoma State team that we've seen in the regionals in the Supers so far. And their first two errors, Courtney, of the whole tournament last night, more walks than they had in the first five games combined. We can tell you this. We've been around Kenny Gajewski a lot the last few years. When he has that level of confidence, he has a good feel for his team. It usually pretends good things for Oklahoma State. Yeah, and he's talked a lot about how his team has responded this year and really proud of them and has bragged on them even after winning game two in that Super Regional. Pretty emotional about it, making it back here to Oklahoma City with the challenges that he felt like this team has gone through. Lexi Kilfoyle in a circle against Kendall Lundberg, Utah's Number five hitter ha! and a high strike. A walk, a couple of ground outs, and a long fly out for Lexi in that first inning. Ball. Came to this team from Alabama. Three years there, her body was pretty beaten up in Tuscaloosa, Lexi Kilfoyle. Chopper right back to her. That's when it pays to be over six foot tall right there. If I was pitching, that would have just likely sailed over my head, or I would have had to have a mega jump to steal it. You didn't have many mega jumps? <laughs> I did, actually. So maybe it would have happened, but uh, maybe, maybe I could have gotten that one. But either way. She's tall, able to grab it, and helps her drop ball, too, with how tall she is and how high she can start that pitch in the zone. And here I thought they called you Air Scarborough. <laughs> you know, only you call me that. 
Oh, that's her. <laughs> Abby Dayton to first base. This is grabbed by Wirt. She flips to Becker. It's very heady player out at second base, Rachel Becker. It's a position she never played until coming to Stillwater. She was a shortstop at Purdue. Played a little bit of shortstop in the offseason, but kindly Naomi's so good that Rachel volunteered to play second and she has started every single game there for Oklahoma State. Strike one to Haley Denning. This one it's fun to watch the infield go up against somebody like Haley Denning who has just so much speed especially with Kilfoyle in the circle you know you're going to get a ball on the ground and if you have Denning's speed has a chance to get down the line safely with almost anything that's hit the infield. Denning will lay down a bunt fair ball tuck nipped her at first. They were on their toes all right. Denning can hardly believe it. The fifth year senior, the Stillwater native, Taylor Tuck, took it away. Amy Hope just said she's out, not going to challenge this call. Bowens, Michelle Smith, Jess Mendoza, Holly Rowe, the call of that one will be here at night for Florida State and Washington, a rematch of the 2018 championship series won by the Knowles. It's a pretty juicy looking day three, and that is a juicy looking ball ruled fair off the bat of Taylor Tuck, who's going to slide into second with a double. Very, very close to the chalk down the line. Tandy Bowman, the plate umpire, says fair ball, and it's a two base hit. Yeah, quick call that umpire had to make, and I saw it hit off of Jimenez's glove, just smoke down the line, and you see right there it like it just barely glanced off of it. She's in fair territory just a little bit, right? Maybe it's an optical illusion, but either way, that was a shot past Jimenez. Taylor Tuck double. As long as it hit her glove, it would certainly then be a fair ball. It looked like it just nicked it, so a double for Tuck, who's had quite a two-pitch sequence. Brings up Megan Bloodworth. Bloodworth lays down a bunt, and Tuck isn't going. Bloodworth is safe, though. That, I don't think, is how Oklahoma State meant it to happen. <laughs> but it might be a more favorable result in a weird way. Yeah. Coach Gajewski not happy with Taylor Tuck's lack of advancing to third base. It's the whole reason that he called a bun. A sacrifice bun is to sacrifice the hitters at bat to advance the runner. And Taylor Tuck is excited about the bun and the fact that Bloodworth was able to leg it out. But Oklahoma State got really lucky here because Jimenez had to pump it. Second baseman wasn't there. Bellardi just yet. And because of that pump, Bloodworth was able to get down to first base even though Tuck did not advance. This is a fielder's choice on the play. No hit. And the eight and the nine hitters reach. And Sidney Sandez will have an all staff meeting at the back of the circle. A bunt that does not advance the runner, but does put the bunter on. Your softball bingo card's got to be about 35 by 35 wide to have that somewhere. Now Becker. And she'll take a strike. I don't know if Oklahoma State before this game talked about executing a sacrifice bunt being a point of emphasis, but they've put down two beautiful sacrifices. <laughs> really should have been a sacrifice, but Sorry. it couldn't be because Tuck <laughs> didn't advance. I mean, it was a beautiful butt. It should be a sacrifice. I'm not knocking you. It just should be. <laughs> I will say, Kenny Gajewski took off that hat, just was like, oh, what are we doing? Yeah. Seeing his reaction said everything about how he thought that that play played out. He is an emotional coach. And frankly, he's felt like his teams needed more emotion from him down the stretch after a very tough close to the regular season. Ball. 
Oklahoma State lost 11 of its last 13 games heading into the NCAA tournament. And for a while, Kenny really couldn't quite put his finger on what was wrong. They were swept by Texas and Oklahoma. Lost to Kansas in the Big 12 tournament. They were really crumbling into the NCAAs. Becker through the left side base hit. Tucked to third, tucked to a stop sign. Oklahoma State has loaded the bases for the second straight inning. So Becker with a walk and a single. And Kenny had a chance to talk things over with Taylor Tuck at third base. So now Cheyenne Factor after Oklahoma State had a two run single from Carlisle with the bases loaded in the first ball, ball one to the number two hitter Factor here. And the way that Lexi Kilfoyle has been pitching. Utah is dangling from the cliff right now even though it's only the second inning. Factor left side base hit Cheyenne factor to bring in another run. They are just punching balls out to the outfield one by one. Third hit of the inning for OSU. It is the graduate student factor in her 261st game to make it three zip. And she has been clutch in those 260 games. That's why she started as a freshman. She is hitting this year almost 500 with runners in scoring position. She does not let her heartbeat get too fast. She doesn't let the moment get too big. The senior knows how to step up in those moments with runners in scoring position. Four for seven. They have seven at bats already with runners in scoring position. They've had 11 batters in the game. And Amy Hogue is out to the circle. At the World Series, she has made it 3 0. Base is still loaded. Nobody out in the second. And desperate times here for Utah. They'll turn to Hallie Morris, the senior, who will be making her NCAA tournament debut and pitching for the first time since April 30th. There are the numbers for Morris. And what this tells you is Mariah Lopez is likely emergency only after throwing 123 pitches in game one. First game in over a month. It's in Hall of Fame Stadium with the bases loaded with Kylie Naomi batting. But a pretty good start. Sydney Sanders one inning five runs against Southern Illinois in her only NCAA tournament game. One inning and at least three runs in her second. And it's Kylie Naomi who leads the NCAA tournament in RBIs with a chance for as many as four. Naomi off the end of her bat that will fall on the dirt trickling to the grass Bloodworth is home station to station for Oklahoma State the first five have reached in the second and it is for nothing OSU. And that ball just hit off the end of Kylie Naomi's bat bit of an off speed pitch she's out in front of it and just pokes it out beyond second base. Nobody can get to it. Perfectly placed as if she just dropped it there with her hand. RBI for Naomi. There's Morgan Wynn. Scorched a single her first time up. This is the Oklahoma State offense we saw in the Super Regionals 
They scored 17 runs in two games against Oregon. Does have a grand slam this year, Morgan Wynn. Came against Louisiana back in February. Strike two. away from Lundberg and here comes the fifth run. Becker's in the score. Factor as well. The ball is out of play. It rolled up on the net. Factor is going to be sent back to third despite her best efforts. So a wild pitch uncorked by Morris and it is five zip. And Bullet goes for a ride. Bailey Runner, who is the designated rider of Bullet, the horse in the Oklahoma State dugout. <laughs> Win. Blasts off left center. That's going to bring in two more. The floodgates are all the way open. It's 7 nothing as Win takes two. This Oklahoma State offense is just rolling they look so locked in at the plate so confident with what they're seeing any speed this is a change up that morgan Wynn is able to stay in her legs and stand back on she just drove that i mean the sound of it coming off the bat she got so much of it much like many of these oklahoma state swings they are just on these pitches off speed and down in the zone a couple of nitro blasts off the bat of win Caitlin Carwile now. Oklahoma State has sent six to the plate in the inning. Five have scored, all six have reached. Wow. Carwile up the middle. It sneaks through. Win rounds third. Win is coming home. Everybody into the pool. Six runs and there is no stopping this Oklahoma State train. Just absolutely on top of everything. Even the hard ground balls aren't going to defenders. They're getting through the infield much like this. If that's hit at Davidson, it's maybe an out, but all their balls are finding holes off the end of the bat by Naomi. Ground balls that get through the infield. Everything working for the Cowgirls. Three RBIs for Carlisle. Ball. I'll tell you what, our replay operator is sure getting a lot of work tonight. <laughs> Most runs scored at a World Series game. Can you believe that? With all of the years they've been here, they've broken their record and they've only committed three outs. Warwick center field, and that will be the fourth out. The eighth batter of the inning, the first one retired by a Utah pitcher. I mean, Kenny Gajewski said it. He told Courtney before the game, Courtney relayed it to us an inning ago. He felt very confident about this team. He said it after the game last night. He went. Oklahoma State was run ruled by Florida State 8 0. And Kenny, after the game, went up on the podium and said, This team is special. They've been special all year. I have no doubt that we'll play well. Said, I wish we could get right back out here and play. And despite the long wait, they have been ready to go. Yahoo! Talent Edwards for strike two. Well, the story on Oklahoma State wasn't how they started the season. It was how they kind of ended the season before the NCAA tournament. Last night looked like the team that we saw at the end of the regular season. Four hits, 
against, albeit a very good Florida State team. And look, this is not Utah's A pitching staff with Mariah Lopez clearly unavailable tonight, but it's still a World Series team in Utah, it's still a good staff. That's dug out by Edwards, it is booted by Millardi at second base, and Carlisle will take an extra base out of it. An error to prolong Utah's unrest in the second. Another just hard hit ground ball that Velarde just should be an out, just misplays it. And I like the base running by, by Carwile. As soon as she saw that in the infield, first of all, she gets around the ball so it doesn't hit her. And then does a 360 turn there at second base with the little fancy footwork to get herself to third. Velarde with the error, her 13th of the year. And here's Tuck who started this whole mess with a first pitch double. But what I, when you think about that 2-11 and 11 stretch that they had, Kevin, and Kenny Gaske told us coming out of the World Series, he addressed her team before the Oregon Super Regional. So they went 2-11, and 11, went to regionals, played like a different team, a, a team that had a reset, a regroup, played like they did in February and March. And what I liked is when Kenny Gaske told us that he addressed the team before that Super Regional, and they were thought they were going to say that, you know, they're back. And he wanted to make the point to them, we never left. Just because we went 2-11 and 11 doesn't mean we aren't the same team back in February and March. We never left. We just went through a little bit of a challenge at some point in the season. They are playing tough competition at the time, and they felt like they were just a player or two away from a lot of those wins. Ball. And what was also galvanizing for Oklahoma State, and we've talked to Kenny and some of the players about this, was when they saw their name pop up as the sixth seed. A lot of people didn't think Oklahoma State deserved the sixth seed because of the cratering at the end of the year. But the committee rewarded their body of work. And it was a reminder for this team just how good they had been. And it was during that time, too, where he felt like when they just couldn't figure out ways to win ball games, that he felt like their team was playing like they were trying to protect a top eight seed. It's an experienced team that knows what the selection show is all about. There's a strikeout. Tuck stepping in front of the catcher, Lundberg. Edwards had second. Amy Hogue might be asking about an out here, and I think that is what Danny Bowman's going to give. Looks like Tuck's going to be out, and then the officials are going to discuss potential interference here against Tuck stepping over the plate into the path of the catcher, Lundberg. Kenny Gajewski will get the explanation. Baker and Charlie, your first Women's College World Series. What do you think so far? What stood out? Well, the first thing that stood out, obviously, is this wonderful place that people get to play. I said earlier that it's got a field of dreams kind of feel to it. And, um, and of course, the quality of the play in the first game and in this game was spectacular, although obviously the first one was a nail biter. Absolutely. We've seen so much growth in the women's championships over the last year. What have you noticed? Well, the biggest thing is there's tremendous amount of competition. Um, it's no longer one or two teams that dominate, although Oklahoma obviously has one heck of a softball team. Um, and I think that's had a big impact on fan interest and a big impact on TV ratings and a big impact on everything else. And there's also a lot of investments that the schools, the NCAA, and many of our media partners have made in these. Uh, in these championships and that makes a big difference as well. I was going to ask it's so cool to see how the Women's College World Series has grown so much. What is the next step to continue to grow this amazing sport? Well I think the first thing we have to do is figure out our next TV contract wow. which obviously will be something that 
we end up talking with you and others about. Um, but I also think there's a lot we can do in the social media space to build on what's been done. There's, around, there's roughly half a million people following women's softball on a number of different social media sites. I would love to get double or triple that number, and I think the opportunity is there to do that. That's fantastic. Charlie, enjoy the rest of this game. I'm planning to. Thanks. Send it back up to you, Kevin. Courtney, thanks, and uh, amen to that. We're all for the growth of this game, and it has grown year over year. Hall of Fame Stadium has grown, literally, physically. And we've had amazing crowds the first two days here the World Series, and tomorrow with Oklahoma and Tennessee, you may not find an empty seat in the house. I think that one has the potential to set a record on Saturday. Those two teams playing game on ABC. Yeah, if you can't make it, we'll be there on ABC. We won't be there, but we'll be watching. <laughs> we'll definitely be watching. Harley Davidson fouls one away. So a six run second inning for Oklahoma State. Yeah, <laughs> kind of a blink and you'll miss it inning. Six runs on 18 pitches to seven batters and now Utah staring down an eight run deficit after just two innings. Factor had a big hit in that inning an RBI single. Oklahoma State sent 10 batters to the plate in total. Six hits one error. And Lexi Kilfoyle's got a strikeout of Davison to begin the third. Yeah, it looked like a little off-speed pitch, a change-up here by Kilfoyle. Coming out of the back of her hand, just tunneling almost that change-up with her drop ball changing speeds. And that pitch comes out of the same tunnel, as we call it, out of her hand. It looks like it's coming 66, 67 as her more firm drop, but she changes speeds with it and just falls off the table at 59. One away for Shelby Ortiz. Ortiz out of play. If you're Utah right now, you've given up eight in the first two innings. You're facing Lexi Kilfoyle, her season's on the line. I mean, what's the vibe in that dugout? What's the thought if you're at bat? You can try to figure out what the mental state is right now for the Utes? It'd be easy to be defeated, but I feel like the way that this team has played all year, like you mentioned before, they're a team that likes to stay loose and have fun and a very offensive team. Bloodworth from third makes the play. The NCAA Women's College World Series Championship Final begins Wednesday, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ESPN. For more information and game times, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. You know, and it's, you think about it, Kevin, it's so tough for Utah because they played earlier today. And so with Mariah Lopez, just the shoulder that they lean on and the circle for, as you mentioned, I think 10 consecutive starts that she had had. It's just tough that they had to play two games today. I mean, that was not how this was supposed to all play out when you looked at the bracket and the schedule, but because of a schedule change last night, they had to play today. She did pitch earlier. Oklahoma State did not play earlier today. And just unfortunate that in an elimination game like this, she's not available to throw because of that other game. Amanda, I was talking to Amy Hogue before this game, and she wasn't thrilled that they had to turn around and quickly play another game. And I asked, what'd you guys do in the quick turnaround? They went back to the hotel, they got a meal, tried to regroup and rest up, but yet not an ideal situation. And part of the reason we had the format change a couple of years ago, so teams aren't playing a couple of games in a day. And there's other deeper pitching staffs here too at the Women's College World Series and with Utah just relying more so on Mariah Lopez, I feel like. If it was another team that got into that situation, I feel like they would have had a would have a better chance of digging out of it. But it's just hard when you rely on that one arm. We see that more and more as that is transitioning to just not about one pitcher on his staff, but a deeper pitching staff across multiple teams, conferences all across the country. 
And Oklahoma State's a, an example of one of those deeper teams. They don't throw Kelly, or they don't throw Lexi Kilfoyle yesterday. They throw Kelly Maxwell for two innings. Kara Acock after the delay. The ball's a little low from Kilfoyle. Oklahoma State wins this. They will get a day off tomorrow. And then they'll have a fully rested staff for Sunday. Winner of this game would get the loser of Tennessee or Oklahoma on Sunday night. Two and two for Bellardi. That ball is hit well. And an opposite field knock for Ali Bellardi. There's Utah's first hit of the game. Comes from their hits leader, the junior Bellardi. Second time through the order. This is what you're going to expect out of Utah to see them squaring up the ball a little bit more and getting their barrels underneath this drop ball. This is a drop ball just left more up. Doesn't have a lot of down bite to it. You can see that it stayed more up in the zone. And Velarde stays on it. Drives it over Kylie Naomi's head. Beautiful swing by Velarde to get on. Having such a terrific season. 77 hits now in 58 games for Velarde. And she'll bring up Utah's all-time RBI leader, Alyssa Bonstrom. To the right side and fielded by Work. Another zero for Lexi Kilfoyle in Oklahoma State is feeling good. Second. Eight of nine reach base to start the inning for Oklahoma State. The Cowgirls had not scored a second inning run in their first six NCAA tournament games. They did enough damage here for the first six. Kevin Brown, Amanda Scarborough, Courtney Lyle. Our entire outstanding ESPN crew. It's day two of the Women's College World Series. Winner of this game will play Sunday against the loser of Tennessee, Oklahoma. A very juicy matchup tomorrow on ABC. Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State with two in the first, six in the second, well on its way to advancing a Sunday. First pitch strike to Megan Bloodworth from Hallie Morris, who came on in relief of Sidney Sandez in a second. Sandez lasted only an inning, gave up six runs. Morris gave up a couple herself to shortstop. And Davison makes the play. Sunday. Baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. Oh, look at this. Morris with a snatch of Becker. Again, aggressive early in the count. Becker hits his change up so hard, and Morris just gets her glove out. That is just pure reaction if you're a pitcher with how hard that ball comes off the bat. You get your glove there, you meet the ball, and ends up burn out. Think you would have caught that? Yes. Air Scarborough. <laughs> ball. Seen a lot of good uh, pitcher fielding plays yeah. in this series, or in this World Series so far. Great athletes. Hallie Morris for Utah. It's actually a two-way player. Dead. That got Factor on the knee. And Cheyenne Factor is hit by a pitch for a two-out base runner. So three productive plate appearances tonight for her. The And Lundberg with a visit. They're still smiling, they're in good spirits, and that has been really true to form for this Utah team all year, even through adversity. Scrappy team that was pretty far off the radar for a World Series berth before the season began. Got a chance to hear from 
some of the Utah players earlier in the week, and they talked about feeling like maybe the loosest team here, very aggressive group. You know, happy to be here maybe sounds like a backhanded compliment, but they are a team that thrives off of that looseness, and that joy. And they have made it here. Ball. Again, for the first time since 1994. It's a really significant accomplishment. And the motivation was that they didn't make it last year. The NCAA tournament, and they said, I felt like they were the first team out is what Coach Hogue told us, and they wanted to do whatever it took to get back in. Naomi lost one to center. And Utah will bat in the fourth in an 8 nothing game. State head coach Kenny Gajewski. And coach, we saw you huddle up the team before that last half inning. What did you talk to them about? I just told them to keep the pedal down. I just didn't want them to uh, let up. Uh, I don't want them to be thinking ahead about anything. Uh, we got a lot of game left here, and we need to finish very strong. When we talked before the game, you seemed confident your team would respond. How have they built that trust with you so that you know they're going to respond? Just got a lot of returning kids that have a lot of pride. Been around here for a long time. They um, they expect to win, and uh, I figured we'd play well. We would respond well. I didn't know. I don't know if I could count on eight runs, but I'll take it. Thanks, Kenny. Okay, th thank you. Yeah, eight runs, most ever in a World Series game for Oklahoma State. Kenny Gajewski in year eight. And I like how he told us they talked about how he's pushed his team the last three weeks at practice and even uh, the day before they played at the Women's College World Series. They were diving, sliding, live at bat, just got after it. And he felt like in the postseason that has even made a difference for their intensity and mindset in games. Some teams kind of ease back on the throttle, wanting to stay healthy in postseason. That's not what Oklahoma State has done. They have been full throttle tonight, leading by eight after three. A couple of innings away from a possible run rule win, but the hardly order to oppose them here. Julia Jimenez, that ball stays fair. Odd spin on that thing as Megan Bloodworth made the play on the three hitter Jimenez. Yeah, it was on a changeup, and Jimenez was out in front of it. It looked like it was going to go foul. It was off the end of her back. Crazy spin. Look at the direction of the ball. It looks like it's going to continue to head foul, and then it hits the dirt, spins the other way. Look at that. That's crazy. I don't see that very often. Like there was a magnet in the ball and a magnet in Bloodworth's glove. Jimenez 0 for 2. Sophie Jaquez is also 0 for 2. Two pitches, two outs for Lexi Kilfoyle. Utah's going to send up a pinch hitter now at two down. The Alicia Espinosa to bat for Lundberg. By the way, it was Morris that stayed in the game that just grounded out. Morris in the designated player spot there for Hawkes. So Utah letting a couple of other players get some at-bats here. Ha! Espinosa graduate student. There are six Utah players that are either out of eligibility or will choose to conclude their softball careers at the end of this tournament. Espinosa is one of those. Six for 17 with a home run on her season. Some good movement there. I think a little off speed curveball by Kilfoyle. That's some late break. Two strikes. Been a nice pitch for her down the stretch, that off speed curve. Yeah. 
Lexi Kilfoyle told us during the week, actually, she felt like people were starting to pick her off-speed curve. How do opposing teams pick that? Is it a grip? Is it a motion? What's usually the culprit there? Yeah, I think because she ends up swinging her arm back in her pre-motion that kind of can show her grip at that point. Oftentimes the third base coach or the dugout is able to see that grip and potentially pick it. Couldn't pick that. Six pitches, three outs. A Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. Elimination game here, Oklahoma State and Utah. We're talking to Utah head coach Amy Hogue and coach, a tough turnaround. What was it like for your program to play earlier today and then play here tonight? Yeah, it was tough. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. The whole year's been hard. A lot of games, it's been tough, but these girls love playing and there was no way that they weren't excited to be here. It didn't matter what time and what the circumstances. I was going to ask you about this group because we have seen them battle. They've continued to make history. They've had an amazing season. They're continuing to do that. What has stood out to you about this run? Just that they have fun. You know, the culture around here is to have a good time playing the game we love and getting better and supporting each other and get your degree and all those things are important. So we've checked a lot of boxes this year. I'm really proud. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Lot to be proud about. Most wins in 23 years, most wins in the Pac-12 in school history. They won the inaugural Pac-12 tournament championship. They had to come from behind to beat UCLA in that game. All adds up to the first women's college World Series berth since Amy Hogue was a player in 1994. Been to the NCAA tournament 15, 16, and 17. They've lost in a tight three game supers to Washington in 17. Finally break down the door this year. Ball. And Utah beats UCLA in the Pac-12 Tournament Championship. That probably got them a seed. They were right on the bubble as to whether or not they'd be a host. They snagged the 15 seed after that win. Morgan win with a ground ball to short. And she is retired. So it was all set up for UCLA Utah part two or part five after the regular season series UCLA the two seed Utah the 15 and then UCLA loses LA two in the LA regional so Utah ends up getting to host San Diego State and it was a pretty breathtaking sight the fan support the glow sticks the energy at Salt Lake City last weekend felt like one of those moments that maybe changes fan interest for Utah softball forever well and they have a really rich history in softball and it goes back into many years ago but um, a lot of strong alumni base who still follow the program including my former head coach Joe Evans who played there and then coached there and he talked about she actually coached Amy Hogue Joe Evans did and talked about their 90 there she is right there calling radio for the youths but made that trip to 94 and she was the head coach that took him here huh. Joe your coach at Texas A&M you see Santa Barbara now and Don in the Utes cap for a couple more games here to do some postseason radio. Well. But this Utah team, Kevin, Amy Hogue told us they trained in the summer in a way that they had never trained before. They put in work after the season ended in June, July, and August to where she said when we started back practice up, we got to start further ahead than where we had in years past. Because they put in that work, they had the motivation, the discipline to put in the work in hopes of not letting the same thing happen, of not making the NCAA tournament like they did the year before. Round out from Carlisle, who is two for three. ESPN streaming live on the ESPN. Let's check in with Courtney. Guys, you were talking about Joe Evans, and she was one of the first to reach out to Amy Hogue about making the World Series, and she told her, enjoy every minute. It is so hard to get here, to get on this stage. Go and have a great time. I thought that was great advice. Courtney, 
It is so hard to get here. I think that when you're a fan and you're around the sport and we get to a chance to be here and cover it, you kind of take it for granted because we know that there are going to be eight teams here no matter what, and we're going to be here. So it's well, easy for us. We get our assignment. We know that we're going to get to the Women's College World Series. But for all these teams, it is so hard to get here, and it gets harder and harder every single year. Just ask the several teams that are here this year who didn't even make it to Supers last year. They'll tell you it's hard to get here. Strike to the pinch hitter, Katie Lott. Yeah, Utah plays in a really tough conference. It's as difficult a conference as there is out of which to get to the World Series. They're picked eighth out of nine preseason this year in the Pac-12. Finished third in the regular season. One of three Pac-12 teams to make it to the World Series. Popped up by Lott. And that is a 1-2-3 inning for Morris. Utah needs a run to keep its season alive. Heavy hitters. Down a stretch. Oklahoma State's three outs away from an early trip back to the hotel. 8 1 rule is in effect if Oklahoma State gets three outs without allowing a run. And Jordan Gasper, the pinch hitter, will try to spoil that. Graduate student against Lexi Kilfoyle. Gasper, a grad student, one of six youths who could be playing her final college game. Ball. Jordan Gasper, by the way, fun fact, cousins with our own Madison Shipman, who has had two family members play in this World Series. Her sister Allie got here for the first time with Alabama. And Maddie was able to come here and surprise Allie, which we showed earlier today on the Alabama game. It was an amazing moment. Casper will sneak it to the left side off the glove of Naomi. A leadoff single for Utah in the fifth. Well, guys, one of the important pieces for Utah getting here is DJ Gasso, their hitting coach. And yes, Gasso, that last name, you've heard it before. He is the son of Patty Gasso. And it's it's so cool that DJ's here. Obviously, JT is on Patty's staff with Oklahoma. And we're told that Patty is watching somewhere inside the stadium in an undisclosed location. But <laughs> DJ has brought so much. And it's so cool to see how, you know, he was here in 2000 when Oklahoma, he was a kid on the field with his brother, JT, winning a championship and then here he is, part of this coaching staff getting back to OKC. And DJ's got a couple of runners on board right now as Haley Denning lays down a perfect bunch single. Two on, nobody out for the Utes trying to keep their season alive. Yeah, and Utah is going to do whatever it takes to push across at least one run here to give themselves more opportunities to score later in the game, trying to take off that run roll. And if it seems odd to bunt down eight, it's simply you have to get a run here or else the game is over. So this is Denning trying to extend the game. It's her 19th bunt single of the season. Haley Denning, and again, maybe the final at bat of her career, a senior who is planning to graduate and move on from softball after a really amazing career. Kayla Nelson is going to pinch it here for Davison. That sneaks away, and that will advance the runners. It's in these times, if you're Oklahoma State, that just kind of kicking yourself because you have an opportunity to end the game with just three outs, and then you let the first two on and Utah of course not going to go away easy at all but a pass ball like that is not what you want to see. That's not Taylor Tuck that's Audrey Schneidmiller who came in an inning ago behind the plate. Oklahoma State's going to bring the infield in up eight and it's right back to Kilfoyle. Oh man did Nelson hit that one well and did she locate it poorly. Nelson hit this ball so hard right back at Lexi Kilfoyle. This was a missile right back at her, and she's just kind of guarding her face. That got on her so fast. And look, she's even not even phased, looking to 
take the next step to try to double up somebody, but that got on her so fast, runners couldn't get very far off. So Emily Capobianco will pinch it now for Utah. I will say too, the one thing that that ball that got by Schneidmeller did is take off the double play. When you have a ground ball pitcher like Lexi Kilfoyle, that is just an inning killer if you can get it. Now two runners in scoring position instead. Capa Bianco, the freshman, takes a strike. Kilfoyle has been a ground ball pitcher today, nine of them in fact. Oklahoma State trying to get two outs without allowing Gasper to cross and get a run rule win. And this is important if you're Oklahoma State because it's potentially saves you a couple of innings off day tomorrow but you'll take all of the time off you can get with the possibility of three games in two days Sunday and Monday. Yeah, and it can be a long journey in the losers bracket once you lose that first game you need all the pitching that you can get you need all the rest that you can get and I think that's why you're seeing Kenny Gajewski have that kind of look in his face. If we we want to end it here. And Utah is like, we want to play some more. Now both teams are almost playing it like it's one nothing. Yeah. One two. Kappa Bianco goes down and Kilfoyle has put the Cowgirls on the doorstep. It's a big out with where Utah is at in their order going up against a pinch hitter you get to show them your best stuff here hit my drop ball it's a tease that looked like it's going to just stay at the knees and falls off the table and she gets her to chase out of the strike zone and it will be Aliyah Bellardi Utah's hits leader to try to give the Utes at least another half inning in this magical 2023 season Velarde a ground ball to first and she will not do it. Oklahoma State returns with a vengeance. Run ruled 8-0 a night ago. They are the run rulers on this Friday. 8-0 to advance to Sunday and to end this magical ride for the Utah Utes.